what we're looking at here is a depth kit specifically made for a 10 by 20 carport. Included in the kit are two light depth motors, the appropriate adapters, one timer control box, channel and wiggle wire, nine mil depth cover, nine mil clear cover with two foot skirting of blackout and wall covers, screws, pivot point adapters, bracing hardware, and clips for the depth roll bar. So here's our 10 by 20 carport frame. You're gonna follow the instructions on assembly from this point. And right now we're gonna start with the roof. First lay out your roof by following the instructions. Then we're gonna go ahead and clip them all together. Once you have your roof assembled, you're gonna come through with your self-tapping screw and your 5 16 bit. And you're gonna come to the inside of each joint and reinforce it. I recommend doing this to all joints where they connect and remember to place it to the inside of your greenhouse so when the plastic goes on you'll have no abrasion against your screw head. Next up we'll be using our channel and installing it along the ridge line of our carport. And here we'll start at the ridge just to the inside to leave enough room for your other channel to go down the sides. Next up, while you still have your roof on the ground, we're gonna take another piece of our channel and we're gonna mark it into the center. And we're gonna line it up into the peak of the carport frame. Easier to work on the ground than a ladder. And we'll start by putting a self tapper here and then we'll bend it down. Once you have your center screw in, you'll be able to just gently bend your channel into place. Where you can then continue attaching it with your self tappers. We repeat this step for this side. And you'll do the same for the other side. Next step, we're gonna use some scrap pieces of inch and three eighths as our foot pegs. And we're gonna get our real measurements so we can do our layout. As you see, our carport is actually one inch shy. So we'll use those measurements to pound in our inch and three eighths and square off our greenhouse. With our four corners squared out and in place, we then ran our tape from the first corner to the last corner now we're going to set our two inside posts. So we went ahead and measured the distance in between. It's about six feet, seven inches on center. We matched up our carport frame with the first po post and the last post. We're going to go ahead and add our next four posts. With your carport frame resting on top of the inch and three eighths. You're just going to gently slide each post down until it makes contact with your ground. Before we put our channel on our outside edges, you're going to want to put your corner brace clamps onto your piping. Here we marked out all four corners to four feet. We'll use these brace clamps and these rail ends and we'll snap them into place and then use a pair of pliers to bend it back and have our corners set up before putting the channel into place. Next up after you have your backyard bomber set up you'll be ready to do your framework. We start with the baseboards. Here we went with two by six pressure treated and we attach them on the inside of the greenhouse using 
are two and a half inch self tappers. Once you get the inside all framed out, we went again on the outside and put another piece of two by six to make it flush with your post. For your front end wall, we went with a four by seven foot door for easy access for all your tools and equipment. Again, with your framework and your baseboards laid out, we made our four foot mark and then we flushed out our two by four by setting it on top of the two by two by six. You can attach it either with a nail plate or a scrap piece of two by four. I did this method and added a scrap piece of inch and three eighths to make it really solid. And then at the top, we use a chunk of two by four to screw in with our two and a half inch self tappers into our frame and attached it to our frame that sits underneath the ridge line. For your back end wall, we framed it up the same way we did our front end wall by making this flush on the inside of your frame and attaching it with our two and a half inch self tappers. Light traps come in all different sizes. Here we know we're using a 35 inch light trap. So using the measurement, we made a rough opening, making sure it fits our, our light trap. And then we went ahead and made a pretty simple shelf here using a two by four on the front, filled in the in-between space on the back with another two by four, and then using a piece of two by six, we set it right on top and our light trap will sit nicely on here and fit right inside here. Before we put our channel on our outside edges, you're gonna wanna put your corner brace clamps onto your piping. Here we marked out all four corners to four feet. We'll use these brace clamps and these rail ends and we'll snap them into place and then use a pair of pliers to bend it back and have our corners set up before putting the channel into place. Now that all your trusses and corner braces are in, you're ready to continue with your channel work. From where you left off on the peak, you're gonna to continue to come back down around. And again, you're gonna gently bend around the corners. Once all of your end wall channel is on, the front hoop and the last hoop, you're then ready to install your channel along the base of your greenhouse. And you'll just butt up against the channel on the first hoop and you'll screw it right to your two by four. Here we just use some tape to tape up our edges on our channel. Up next, after you have all your channel installed and you're ready to put your plastics on, you're gonna start with your end wall plastic. Here we have our 10 by 11. 10 is our height, 11 is our width. We wanna make sure we have our white facing out and our black facing in. Then you'll go ahead and take one of your wiggle wires and you'll cut it down to about six to seven inches in length. And we'll start our installation by pinning our end wall covers into the corners on either side and the top and then again on either side. You only need to use these short pieces because then when you go put your clear cover on you will then use full lengths of wiggle wire to attach both your main cover and your end wall covers. Get your motor ready for the roll bar. Your motor comes with two adapters for your inch and three eighths bar. You see one adapter has two holes and that will go on the bottom using the long bolt to attach. The second piece has one hole and will line up using the bolts provided to screw them in. You also want to remove 
the inserts. Next up, we're gonna assemble your pivot point using a piece of inch and a quarter square stock by about three feet long and a piece of inch and five eighths, four feet long. You can get an eight footer and cut it in half. They sell these pre-cut at Home Depot or Lowe's or your hardware store. They don't come with a hole in it, so you'll need to drill yourself a half inch hole on either side, which will then be bolted together. Another option is to get a piece of post sign from the hardware store. And then provided in the kit is this insert that's inch and three eighths with the hole pre-drilled in it. You can then take it and insert it into your inch and five eighths. And then using your self tappers, you can self tap it into place in two to three locations. Here we're gonna line up our inch and three eighths. This will be used as our rolling bar. I'm gonna connect the sleeves together. Using your self tapper, you'll go ahead and put two in on either side. And using a piece of Gorilla Tape, you'll go ahead and tape over your bolts to help with the abrasion against your plastic. Once you have your inch and three eighths roll bar connected together at the, at the joints, you can go ahead and slide it into your motor shaft. Using a self-tapping screw, I'm gonna pre-drill it. Once you have your pivot point in, we're going to then take our inch and five eighths and our bolt and connect our pivot point to our inch and five eighths. We're gonna put our insert in to our inch and five eighths. Self tap it on one side, flip it over. With your pivot arms in place and your inch and five eighths bolted through, you'll then take one of your seven foot sections of inch and three eighths and slide it into the inch and five eighths. This end will then be connected to your other motor shaft. And once connected, it will act as a telescoping arm which will allow your motor to move up and down with the shape of your greenhouse. With your motors hooked up to your pivot points and before pulling any of your plastics, we went ahead and we set up our timer control box. You're gonna go ahead and wire in your AC cord to your AC input and your motors to motor one and motor two. You can keep everything red positive green negative, red positive, green negative. When wiring to your motors, your motor on the right with the green knob on the ground is gonna be true. It's gonna go red to red and green to green. The motor to the left of your house where the red is on the ground, you're gonna swap the color. So you're gonna go red to green and green to red. This way, when you go to turn on your timer control box, when you go to open, everything will roll up. And when you switch to down, everything will roll down. Motor is properly wired to your timer control system. Go ahead and turn on the system. Make sure it's on manual mode and go ahead and close your motors. So this will be towards the top of your greenhouse. This will be to the bottom of the greenhouse. This is set to zero right now. This we set to about 15. We did that for both sides. Next, you're ready to put your clear cover on. You'll take your cover, roll it out to the length of the greenhouse. You'll tie it to a couple ropes. Then you and your buddy will pull it over and then you'll end up fastening it temporary to either end. Our clear cover pinned into the center ridge. We're now gonna roll out our blackout and put it over so it's on top. We will then pin the center of this into the center ridge. We rolled up our clear towards the center. Now you can get on your ladder and safely wiggle in both covers to the center track. Once you have your center ridge wiggle wired all the way down, you're gonna go ahead and lift 
Put your roll bar up over the edge. And you're gonna roll down your clear plastic and then you're ready to pull it tight and wiggle wire down the ridges and at the base. With your clear cover on and your depth cover rolled up, you're gonna go ahead and pull tight one half of the greenhouse cover and wiggle in from the center ridge and just this half of it, down both sides and then down along the bottom. Be sure you don't have your blackout cover rolling over your adapter. Trim off any excess. Upon rolling up, if you get to the point where your motor stops and you still have more rotations to go, select the up rotation and give it a push. This will allow more rotations without adjusting the knob. Here we're gonna put our strapping on. You're gonna feed one end through the bottom of the greenhouse. You'll pull your strapping through from the other side. Take a piece of two by four, or two by two, and you'll wrap it. Once one side is done, you can then pull your strapping through the other side and do the same thing and make it nice and tight. <laughs> 